Stop what you're doing because you were created for so much more and need to watch this video until the very end. Hi, my name is Pastor Broderick Battle. I pastor the Tree of Life Church and the Church of Life Global Network, and you have tuned in to the Agent of Change podcast. Today, I have a simple message from Jesus to you. Jesus told me to tell you that he chooses you. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 9, verse 10 and 11 says this, now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house and behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said this to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but only those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Living in a world where one is guilty by association isn't anything new. Even today, people will attempt to size you up and prejudge your character and intentions by who they see you with and what they see you do. Here, we see Jesus is no exception to the rules, as religious rulers attempt to prejudge his intentions based on his association. In the A clause of this text that says many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with him, the context suggests that this was a gathering at Matthew's uh, house with friends and former business associates. We can conclude that Jesus decided to take advantage of this opportunity and reach those who he knew. In doing so, Jesus aims at a mission to the reprobate classes, and his first step is of Matthew's discipleship, and his second is the gathering together of him within the large number of people and classes that were present. In knowing, knowing that there were many tax collectors and sinners, we can estimate that this was held not in a private home, but in a public hall, and that in any case was a great affair. Possibly hundreds were present, too large of a group to be in a home. The big clause of this text says, why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and the sinners? To answer this question was simple because Jesus is the friend of sinners. God demonstrates his own love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter five and eight. Whether you know it or not, oftentimes your biggest blockade to having a personal relationship with Jesus isn't Jesus, but rather the religious lawmakers, rulers, and church people who typically have an ungodly agenda to manipulate and control the narrative of your divine inheritance for their own motives. Stop letting churches and religious people feed you a false narrative of who Christ is for. Jesus is for humanity. Jesus is for everyone. Revelations 22 and 17 says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, let him or her that hath an ear come. Let them who are thirsty and whosoever will, let them come and take of the water of life. In this text, the term sinner isn't just one you perceive who does a list of uh, things you may deem immoral, but it includes uh, common people who do not share in the scruples, ideologies, or even theologies, methods, and traditions of religiously proud Pharisees. You'll be surprised at the number of people who call themselves sons and daughters of God, Christians even, who feel that you are un unworthy of God's approval and love simply because you don't believe it the way they believe it. And maybe you don't show up to church every Sunday. Maybe you don't give to the poor as often as you should. Maybe you aren't uh, the most modest in your apparel. And maybe sometimes you use choice words more frequently than some. And just maybe you aren't the people's choice. But one thing I am confident without a shadow of a doubt, you are God's choice. Put your hand on your chest and say, I'm God's choice. Sisters and brothers, Jesus takes a moment to address the Pharisees and says, those who are well have no need of a physician, but only those who are sick. This was the principle the criticizing Pharisees could not understand. The Pharisees were like doctors who wanted to avoid contact with sick people. Of course, they wished the sick people would become healthy, but they wouldn't risk helping someone else out of fear they too would become infected. We are fortunate that God calls sinners and not just saintly people. Jesus came to benefit those who understood their inherent need for him. Those who are sick or poor in spirit, according to Matthew 5. Proud people often see no need for Jesus. Those who have it all together, always doing the right things and boast in their ability to be righteous are often the ones who benefit nothing from Jesus. 
But Jesus is looking for those people who may not have it all together, but who will say, here am I. He's looking for those people who may not measure up to the status quo, but will say, here am I. He's looking for those people who will not be halted or stopped by dogmatic and dangerous churches, church people and the like, who care less about the opinions of others, but will emerge in spite of and say, here am I. If you've been filling a void in your life, a void that can't be filled with things or people, Jesus is here for you. If you have this sense within you that there's more untapped potential and more to life, but you have no clue on how to accomplish it, Jesus is here for you. Contrary to popular belief, Jesus doesn't care about your background. He doesn't care about your race, your skin tone, your sexual orientation, identification, or affiliations. You have access to the Lord Jesus. Again, Revelations 12, 22 and 17 says this, whosoever will take him of the water of life, come. To the people who don't believe this, this is what Jesus has to say. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Go and learn what this means. In this text, Jesus is quoting Hosea chapter six, verse six. In Hosea's day, people, the God's people, are uh, still good at bringing sacrifices, but they have forsaken the art of mercy. They were like Christians who come to church every Sunday, but are mean and nasty in their dealings to others. They abandoned mercy because they gave up the knowledge of God and truth. They'd rather show up to church every Sunday under the banner of Christianity and not actually live the principles of being Christ-like. What is it to be Christ-like? It is to love God with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your soul, and to love your neighbor, whether you agree with their lifestyles or not, as you love yourself. God would rather have right hearts full of truth and mercy than sacrifice. He would rather have people who recognize their flaws, who need his help on a daily basis over people who are self-righteous and do the right things, but can't show mercy to anyone else. If you have a right heart today, God wants you answer his call. If you've been feeling something calling you to a deeper connection, a relationship with the Lord, uh, listen, put the emoji hand up in the comment because I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have your children here. There are people watching. There are people under the sound of my voice who understand that you have created and called them for so much more than what life has offered them right now. Father, you promised that they could have life more abundantly through you. And so, Father, we pray by your spirit that you would open up the floodgates and the windows of heaven and you would pour out a blessing that they do not have room to receive. We pray that you would make their pathway clear and straight, provide strategy, wisdom, knowledge, understanding to navigate the, navigate the time and the space in which they are living. Father, we pray that from this moment on, their lives will never be the same because their hearts, their minds, and their spirits are choosing to believe. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Tonight, I want to pray also for those of you who may feel that you have lost your way. You've lost your way in life and you want to find your path back to Jesus through repentance. Listen, I want you to pray this simple prayer, the Lord's prayer with me. Let's do it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. If you believe Jesus loves you, I want you to type I believe in Jesus in the comments. Go share and subscribe to my channel right now. God bless.